Welcome to the Martin Luther King Jr. Community Leaders Awards, sponsored by Virginia Union University, Living the Dream Incorporated, and Dominion Energy. Governor Yunkin, elected leaders, academic and community leaders, and of course students, it's good to be with you all today. Now I would be remiss if I didn't recognize my friend, President Hakeem Lucas. I want to thank you for your leadership and for your invitation to this event, which honors a great American and benefits one of our nation's historic institutions of higher education, Virginia Union University. And let's give a round of applause to the service staff here at the downtown Marriott as well. This morning, I bring a warm welcome from the great city of Richmond, a city where we strive every day to govern in Dr. King's spirit of equal opportunity, justice, and yes, love. Today's theme, in all things excellence, is most appropriate because today, the university highlights the contributions of educators, our Richmond Public School principals. The first clap was from Jason Cameras. They recognize public school principals with Community Leaders Awards. And today, Union presents the first ever Living the Dream Legacy Award posthumously to an excellent public servant and a friend, the late Congressman Donald McEachin. My friends, these awards reflect the simple fact that our best educators bring out the best in us, and our best public servants reflect the best in us. See, excellence is what we strive for in our city, but it is not about making, or it's not about the recognitions or the accolades that we get, because we get plenty of those. No, excellence to me means our capital city is a city of compassion, a capital of compassion. It means embracing our diversity as a strength, not as a weakness. It means recognizing injustice done to any one of our brothers and sisters is injustice done to us all. Simply put, it means loving thy neighbor. My friends, an excellent city, a compassionate city, feeds the hungry. It cares for the sick, and it shelters the cold. An excellent city, a compassionate city, creates hope for those in despair. It provides opportunity for those shut out. And yes, it defends the rights of all God's people, no matter the color of their skin, how much money they have in the pocket, who they love, or who they pray to. To pursue excellence is to work toward Dr. King's vision of, of the beloved community. That work continues, and perhaps it's more important now more than ever. We are, all of us, a work in progress. But your presence here today underscores your commitment to that work. And I believe there is enough faith hope and love in this room and enough excellence in this city, commonwealth and country, to make the beloved community a reality. That is why I'm so honored and privileged to be in your company today to celebrate these leaders and to support Virginia Union. So on behalf of the great city of Richmond and the capital of compassion, I welcome you and thank you. Hey, my name is Christopher Webb. I call this area home, the North Virginia Beach area. I always love this community. The Dominion Wind Turbine Project will be a help, not else just to our kids, but to our grandkids as well. To me, that's a win-win across the board. The more of them you have, the better we are. 
I think just the greatest thing that could happen and I'm excited about it. a dream of a time when we all realize the true intention of our lives. We realize the talents and gifts which has been given to us by our Creator. In the words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creeds. Good morning. I am Davon Harris, Student Government President at the illustrious Virginia University. Thank you for allowing me to be here today. Dr. Dream, Dr. King's dream has truly become the anthem of our times, the benchmark for our nation which measures our progress. The dream holds us to a promise of what we are to be and what we have become. Those magnificent words spoken nearly 60 years ago as a plan, a wish, a dream, a message truly inspired by the divine. Our dream today is for what remains still unfinished but is coming to life every day. The dream of visionary Mary Ann Lumpkin for a dignified life for her people, her children, her family, and those who follow. The dream of our first VU president, Malcolm McVicker, for an institution that educates all. The dream of the Honorable Dr. Samuel DeWitt Proctor for a college and nation of, of equity and justice. The dream of the Honorable Governor L. Douglas Wilder for Virginia that truly serves its citizens. The dream of the Honorable Governor, the dream of the Mayor LeVar Stoney for an inclusive, thriving, and safe Richmond. The dream of a president, Dr. Hakeem J. Lucas, for the promise of generational wealth and upward mobility for our beloved community. And now the dream of a student leader, me, Davon Harris, for a time that we truly realize and accept that we are unique and here to support and care for one another. And in the words of Dr. King, I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted, every hill and mountain shall be made low, the rough places shall be made plain, and the crooked places will be made straight. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. The dream of Dr. King, myself, and others will and has already started to come to pass. The, the fight still continues. God bless you, and good day. Thank you, Thank you Davon. Thank you, Mayor Stoney. And can we give a round to the choir, VU Choir? Dr. W. Franklin Richardson and Dr. Hakeem Lucas will bring us greetings. Ms. Diane Leopold, on behalf of Dominion Energy, will then follow. And as you know, Dominion Energy has been supporting this breakfast for 45 years now, from the very beginning. So we are thankful. We are so very thankful for their generosity. Let's begin with Dr. Richardson. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> Let me, on behalf of the university and our board of trustees, thank you for joining us in what is a long struggle. Today, we have not just come to celebrate this moment, 
but to acknowledge a glorious legacy of struggle that Virginia Union represents. Since we started in 1865, the, the topography of our nation has gone up and down. There have been mountains and valleys, but we have been able to survive and to thrive. And your participation today assures us that we are on our way to a brighter future. Let me tell you that we are caught in what I call a living contrast. The contrast is in some ways a contradiction. It is, it is, but it is a living contrast because it has been with us from the very moments of 1619 when we began our pilgrimage as African Americans into this nation. That contrast represents light and darkness. We have fought against light and darkness and it has never become conquered. Every time we think that we have conquered, another dark glimpse, come, a dark cloud comes over us. And every time we think the light is very bright, we are sure to understand that the light can go out. So we are caught in this contradiction and this contrast. Every time we come to a Martin Luther King breakfast, we are talking about the same things because the same seeds of our racist past continue to contaminate our promise of a possible future. We are caught in this dilemma, this dilemma of light and darkness. But we, we, are, we are resolved, Virginia Union is resolved, that we will in fact cause the light to shine. Yeah. And we know the light will shine because we've seen it in the high places of this government. We've seen it in corporate America. And we've seen it in the gleaming eyes of our children who began to capture the future. And in their eyes, that light will not go out. And, and Virginia Union will continue to be the ground where the light shines. So let your light shine wherever you are. And may Martin Luther King's life provide catalyst for a bright light for tomorrow. God bless you. Somebody say amen. 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 And amen again. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the 45th Community Leaders Breakfast. I have uh, three uh, simple goals to speak to you about. The first is to give you what we call a face refresher. As we said, you are on camera. This will be live all across the Commonwealth. So grab your napkin real quick and just Fix your face. Don't forget to smile. Come on, take a break. Come on, get yourself together because the cameras are now beginning to pan the room. No, for real. No. Seriously. Straighten your ties. Make sure everything is good because you are beautiful and we want everybody to know that is the case on Monday. Okay. The second is to usher us through what could be difficult for many people to acknowledge and to thank everyone that's here, the 800 of you, for all you have done to make today possible. I've dreamt, yes, I've dreamt of how to do this and been instructed by many people. I think I've come to the best way, so help me God. The first is, I want to call attention to those who make this event possible and ask them to stand with me so that we can all thank you together. This is first those from Virginia Union University who have made the event possible. From Robin Bird to Deborah to Joe Brooks to all of those who are in institution advancement to all of the faculty, the staff, the administrators, the trustees as I call you, come on stand. Come on, stand, all of you, stand. <laughs> Alumni, all of you who have made this possible, thank you. You know, you can't do this work alone, and I stand on the shoulders of 12 previous presidents. The 12th is Dr. Claude G. Perkins, and he is here, and please clap for him and the great work he has done at Virginia Union, 10 years. Also, we have a number of alum who hold elected office and who have served Virginia Union as gifts to the Commonwealth and to the city. One who has been a close advisor and helping to navigate is uh, Pastor, Delegate, Mayor Jones. You all know him, please stand. <laughs> 
Of course, as we consider all the work we do, we honor those who represent Dr. King's dream federally and our federal government, of course, none other than our Congressman, Bobby Scott, who is here with us. <laughs> to all of those who have sent prayers, well wishes, we thank you. And of course, there's a person who sits between the Commonwealth and the federal government. If anybody is driving 95 North, please take Sister McLennan with you. Senator, can you please stand and let us acknowledge you? Can somebody take it with you? I think she's gonna ride back with Congressman Scott. We next wanna honor all of those who represent the Commonwealth, from our governor and first lady, our lieutenant governor, we have our lieutenant governor, of course. We have the secretary of our commonwealth. Uh, we want her to stand, Kay Cole James here. Our attorney general, I know we have our speaker. And of course, all of those who are members of the assembly, please stand. Delegates, senators, all of you. Of course, we appreciate our representation from our own, very own, Delegate McQuinn. Thank you for all you've done. Of course, the relationship between the Commonwealth and education is extremely important, particularly for HBCUs. And Secretary Gadara is here, and we want to honor her. And please stand and just let everybody clap for you. <laughs> our city, you've heard from our mayor, but we want the president of our council, our alum, Councilman Jones, and all the council members who are here to please stand. <laughs> Thank you. Particularly, she is our alum uh, and uh, a uh, legacy uh, member of our community our Councilwoman Lambert from the Powerful Third. Thank you, too, for being here. The Third is rising. Next, it's important for us to recognize sponsors. Now, it is, all are listed, yes, on the back of your program. But this is a first for us. Uh, while we were caught in pandemic matters, like others around the nation and the world, we had to innovate. And the first innovation was not to stop the community leaders breakfast, but to allow community leaders breakfast to be represented virtually, as many of you have done across your businesses. With that work over two years, we were able to win tele awards and be nominated for an Emmy. And we decided with our CBS partners to continue this and tried to do it live and in person. This is our first attempt, but we thank CBS 6 for your partnership. <laughs> You've heard it. Since 1978, when Reverend T.C. Milner, where is he? Dr. Johnson, where are you? Wave, got together. Come on, Reverend T.C., you know you ain't shy about it. Raise your hand. When they thought about how Richmond community can come together in a very bipartisan way to celebrate what we know the progress that we need in our nation, represented in our city should be. Dominion Energy stood, and for 45 years they have kept standing to keep the light going. <laughs> All of the sponsors, we thank you. Specifically, we're not just kept with cities, but Henrico stands with us. Henrico, can you please stand, all of those from the county? And we thank you. We thank every one of our sponsors, our banking relationships, our community partners. Can everybody who sponsored this and made this possible please stand and be celebrated? It's a wonderful thing when your alumni association 
not just invest in your fundraising, but also in your continued progress. Thank you so much to our president, Anju White. She's here. Did you wave? Yes. And thank her and our Alumni Association for their support. Also, this moment is not just about Virginia Union, but it is also about historically black colleges and universities, and as we represent the black community together. It is great to have the leader of the public higher education institutions in the Commonwealth and the leader of public higher HBCUs across the nation. President Abdullah, can you please stand once again of the Virginia State University. Come on, give him a hand. He's doing a great job, y'all. We honor him for his work, partnership, and working with us to make the dream a reality. Honorees, you will hear this over and over today, but Superintendent Cameras and the Richmond Public Schools need to be honored for the work that they're doing as frontline defenders of the dream. Without teachers, without education, the work of creating beloved community does not manifest. We need to honor each one of our principals who sometimes get a bad rap for doing a great work. The most underappreciated position and underpaid position that causes change and impact in our community, you should all be on your feet for the first time, but not the last, for all of those who, when you get tired, you send them to them, they come back and take care of your kids, they wipe their noses, they deal with their attitudes, they inspire them, they help them to learn, they train them to get ready to take over your businesses, work in your churches, run your communities. Teachers, principals, need celebration. Thank you. For the first time, every single one, honorees stand. I know they're going to have you stand, but honorees, principals stand. They need to see you. They need to see you. For the first time, all of them honored for their work. We appreciate you. We thank you. We look forward to working with you as we do our work with K-12 partnerships. There are many who have lived the dream, many legacies of our ancestors that have gone on. But we also today pause to celebrate the life lived and the legacy still being curated by Congressman McEachin. And we want to celebrate him now. Can you stand and honor him, please, too? Today, come on, clap for him. Today, our Commonwealth attorney, his wife, Ms. Keechum, will accept an award in his honor. And from now on, we will always honor his legacy with an award to someone who has lived a life like he. Thank you, and please be seated. There are many who, of course, have made today possible and who work behind the scenes. But my last goal is to simply just give a call to action, education, empowerment, the beloved community, justice, equality, equity. You got to love Chairman Richardson, dark, light, contrast. All of the imagery that represents where we are today. Today, we are clear and we're focused that what we do is for those who have yet to be born. We are clear that the only group of people for us that take all of us is a word called students. I leave you with them and their faces. Students stand. Whatever you do today, before you leave and run to your job, remember the younger generation. 
Uh, there was once a great man who said, if you want to love me, do for the least of these. For what you do, come on students, stand up, let them see you. For what you do for the least of these, you do for me. Come on everybody, stand up young people, stand up. Before you leave the day and rush back to your world of busyness, get their number, ask them their name. Zell and cash app them quickly. <laughs> Am I talking right, young people? Yes, yes I'm talking right. I'm talking right. <laughs> Zell them and cash app them. Did I do it all right the second time? But bless them. That's the point. Bless them with an the internship. Bless them with an opportunity. They are prepared. They just need the opportunity to meet them along the way. Are they perfect? No. But this is the secret of the kingdom of God, that perfection need not enter. Only those who have found help from on high. Help us help this next generation. We love you. We appreciate you. And more importantly, we say thank you, and I got to do this, for VTAG. Thank you for VTAG. Thank you, because now Virginia State and Virginia Union, we get to say that all Pell eligible VTAG residents of Virginia get to go to our institutions tuition free. You should stand for that. Because of the work of what we do, Pell eligible, Virginia residents, go to our HBCUs to wish and free. We're making progress. The light is shining. Happy Community Leaders Day. At Dominion Energy, we're committed to DE&I and driving a culture of inclusion. Over the years, we've developed policies and programs to foster a diverse workplace where everyone feels welcome and valued. I want Dominion Energy to be a place where people feel welcome and appreciated, not in spite of who they are, but because of who they are. I want Dominion Energy to be an example, to show how to do diversity, equity, and inclusion right. Welcome back to the Martin Luther King Jr. Community Leaders Awards, sponsored by Virginia Union University, Living the Dream Incorporated, and Dominion Energy. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you to celebrate the legacy of Dr. King and the memory of Congressman Donald McEachin, who embodied the values Dr. King preached. Throughout his career, he fought like Dr. King himself for justice, peace, and dignity for all. I know we all miss him dearly, so it is incumbent on us to carry on his legacy. This is my seventh year serving on Virginia Union's Board of Trustees, and thanks to the decades of Dominion, thank you. Seven more. <laughs> and thanks to the decades of Dominion Energy sponsorship, this is my seventh year speaking at this event, one of my favorite events of the year. I am normally wedged right after Drs. Lucas and Richardson, <laughs> so I know my role and I will be brief. <laughs> when I saw this year's theme was in all things excellence, I thought of Virginia Union University. I thought back on all of the progress that Union has brought to our community and to our state and all of the work yet to do. Virginia Union, at its core, is about combining the scientific and the spiritual. And the reason goes back to something Dr. King often spoke about. As he said it in his 1954 sermon about recovering lost values, the trouble isn't so much that our scientific genius lags behind, but our moral genius lags behind. Through our scientific genius, we've made of the world a neighborhood.
but through our moral and spiritual genius, we failed to make of it a brotherhood. Six decades later, those words still ring true. Virginia Union prepares the whole student, the scientific and the moral mind, to work in service of our community. Community development, in fact, is a key strategic priority of the institution. Union's faculty teach, research, and serve to make a better campus, a better community, a better Richmond, a better Virginia, and a better world. We all recognize how difficult these last three years have been since we've been here live together. During the pandemic, the economic uncertainty, and even the winds of war abroad. I understand why people, including those on Virginia Union campus, and indeed my own colleagues, may have felt discouraged. It is during these difficult times that the work done by Virginia Union matters so much. Dr. King famously said, and Dr. Richardson enforced this morning, darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can do that. At Virginia Union, the light of intellectual inquiry, moral and spiritual discovery, and community service shines bright. It is for all of us to help foster and support these efforts. I am proud to be part of the Virginia Union community and to support this journey. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Leopold, Dr. Richardson, and Dr. Lucas. I have to say, I'm very impressed. You thanked everybody in the room. That is impressive, yes. It is my pleasure to bring Senator Jennifer McKellen to the podium to give remarks and to present the first Living the Dream Legacy Award. Please, please welcome Senator McKellen. Thank you and good morning to my soars of Delta Sigma Theta Incorporated. Happy Founders Day. As chair of the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial Commission, I have had the privilege to honor the life and legacy of Dr. King with my commission members and also to continue his work. To continue his work through public policy and education programs to strive towards the beloved community. We have shed light on the truth of Virginia's black history from Dr. King's connections and visits to Virginia to the life and legacy of the nearly 100 Reconstruction era black men who served in the General Assembly before the 1902 Constitution stripped their rights away, some of whom were born enslaved but went on to lead extraordinary lives. We've told the dark history of lynching in Virginia, and we constructed the Emancipation and Freedom Monument, a living monument to the fight for equality, equity, freedom, and justice. Dr. King dedicated his life to achieving the beloved community where everyone is cared for absent of poverty, hunger, and hate. For the first time, we are presenting the Living the Dream Legacy Award, and I cannot think of a more deserving person than our friend and former congressman, the late Congressman Donald McEachin. Donald worked with every fiber of his being to bring about the beloved community through public policy. From the courthouse to the state house to the Congress, Donald was a true servant leader and warrior for social justice and environmental justice. He touched lives across Virginia and this country. He passed laws to help the less fortunate, to expand access to health care, to defend voting rights, take action on climate change and environmental justice. In Dr. Benjamin May's eulogy for Dr. King, he said he drew no distinction between the high and the low, none between the rich and the poor. He believed especially that he was sent to champion the cause of the man farthest down. These words also describe our friend, 
Donald McEachin, and his life's work to champion the cause of justice. As Dr. May said of Dr. King, he belonged to all mankind, and now he belongs to posterity. While he is not standing in the room with us today, Donald's achievements live on in this room and around this country. It is my honor and privilege to present the Living the Dream Award in honor of Congressman Donald McEachin. Aston Donald McEachin is the son of an Army veteran and a public school teacher, a husband, a father of three, and a grandfather of one. From a very young age, he knew that he wanted to be a public servant. He graduated from American University with a degree in political science and from the University of Virginia School of Law. He also received a Master of Divinity from the Samuel D. Wood Proctor School of Theology at Virginia Union University and remained a steadfast supporter of VUU. After serving in both chambers of Virginia's General Assembly, in 2016, Donald McEachin was first elected to Congress. In each role, he championed reforms to U.S. gun laws, environmental protection, and affordable health care. He obtained millions of dollars to support the needs in his district. During his career, he challenged students with competitions and recognized their accomplishments. Donald McEachin tirelessly fought for justice, civil rights, and for communities that are often left behind. His legacy and vision will carry on through the many people he touched. I would ask if Colette McEachin, Dr. Lucas, Dr. Richardson, Ms. Leopold, our governor and attorney general, uh, would please join us at the risers. The special plaque that is being presented to Colette McEachin right now reads, Virginia Union University Living the Dream Legacy Award, presented posthumously to the Honorable A. Donald McEachin for lifetime achievement, dedication, and service. 45th Annual Community Leader Celebration to honor Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., January 13th, 2023. Virginia Union University Board of Trustees, Dr. Hakeem J. Lucas, University President. I now have the pleasure of introducing the 74th Governor of Virginia, the Honorable Glenn Youngkin. He began his leadership of the Commonwealth on January 15th of last year. Governor Youngkin's mission is to work in partnership to strengthen the spirit of Virginia together. We thank him for offering his support of the Community Leaders Breakfast today and offering his remarks this morning. Please welcome our Governor, Governor Youngkin. Well, good morning. good morning. What an honor it is to be with all of you. President Lucas, I think we're going to have to get a bigger room next year. <laughs> I want to thank you for inviting me to join you on the 45th annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Community Leader Celebration. As we recognize the life and legacy of an extraordinary man, Dr. King transformed society as we know it, inspiring generations from years past, leaving an unmistakable impact on our generation now and all of those yet to come. One of the single most consequential people in the history of America. 
Dr. King lived a purpose. He recognized the great injustices of intolerance and bigotry beset across our nation and made it his mission to bend the arc of moral universe towards justice. And he extolled us to remember that we may have all come on different ships, but we're in the same boat now. Dr. King started every day in prayer. And while I'm a bit intimidated by all of the pastoral leaders and preachers around me, I'd like to add to that prayer this morning, if I may. So if you'll join me, bow our heads and quiet our hearts and open our minds to the Lord Almighty. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege and honor of gathering today. We thank you for our families, our colleagues, our friends. And particularly, Father, we thank you today for the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Heavenly Father, we come to you with the utmost humility and with the knowledge that the complex affairs of our world are nothing when compared to the infinite glory of your kingdom. Lord, we invite you here today. Come, Holy Spirit. We ask that you invade our lives with your will. Replace our desires with your desires. Lead us down the path that you would have us walk, not the one that we desire for ourselves. Father, we ask that you bless us with your wisdom and grace, that you remind us to treat each other with the same grace that was preached and role modeled by Dr. King. And Father, in these times of challenges and confusion and consternation and crossroads, may you strengthen us to look to you. May you strengthen us to remember the words of Psalm 121 that we lift our eyes up to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. We pray all this. In your Son, our Savior, Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you. It's always so inspiring to be among students. It's also inspiring to be among students and alumni from Virginia Union University. This is a special place. You have and are leaving the most amazing mark on history, graduating countless leaders that have made our commonwealth, the nation, and our world a better place. And I hate to do this, but just to name a few, with the great fear that I will leave someone out. <laughs> Spotswood Robinson, the former United States DC Circuit Court judge, a legal scholar, and one of the legal architects of Brown versus the Board of Education. Henry Marsh, the first African-American mayor of Richmond. Reverend Dr. Gina Marsha Stewart, the first African-American female elected to serve an established African-American Baptist con congregation in Memphis and Shelby County. Governor L. Douglas Wilder, the first African-American ever elected as governor in America. And of course, yeah. and of course, the late Congressman Donald McEachin, who we honor today. All incredible men and women, and all Virginia Union graduates. In fact, Virginia Union has made such an impact that Dr. King himself is known to have been personally influenced by his mentors, friends, and confidence coming from this great university. Of course, one such graduate was Dr. King's mentor, Benjamin Mays, the president of Morehouse College. His dear friend, 
Wyatt T. Walker, another Virginia Union graduate, served as Dr. King's chief of staff and as the executive director of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. Those relationships were instrumental to forward the forging of Dr. King's own mark on Virginia Union, our nation, and the world. In 1960, Dr. King trained the 34 courageous Virginia Union students who sat in at Tallheimer's department store to protest racial discrimination when they refused to serve African Americans. Virginia Union should be proud. Virginia Union should be proud of their influence and the direct relationship to Dr. King's vision and promise for a better future. It should serve as a reminder that no matter how divided our nation may feel at times, when we come together, there is a better future on the horizon. Dr. King's life of service brought us together in a time when it was easy to feel hate, to be filled with anger. He taught us to love, and most challenging, he taught us to forgive those who may in fact mistreat us, who may hate us. His courageous fight for justice, for unity, and for peace inspires us today to serve the better angels in our hearts rather than fall prey to temptation that is presented by anger and resentment, unforgiveness, and malice. Today we are charged to do our part in paying forward that portion of America's promissory note, that note that is a promise that every Virginian and every American, in the words of Dr. King, where all men, yes, black men as well as white men, would be guaranteed the inalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Dr. King was a man who carried his mantle of responsibility and challenged others to do so. He inspired everyone to live a life of purpose and to treat each, each other with respect. In the spirit of unity and respect, let me circle back to Virginia Union and our other great HBCUs across Virginia. We recognized that in Virginia our treasured HBCUs were too often overlooked. HBCUs have always been at the forefront of excellence and of implementing the realization of dreams. I want to thank the leadership of these great universities for your partnership. Last November, we announced breakthrough tutoring programs between the Urban League of Hampton Roads and Greater Richmond, local school divisions, Norfolk State, Hampton University, Virginia State University, and your very own Virginia Union University. Together, with HBCU students, we are building new pathways to success by providing paid opportunities to help high school and middle school students. That is just one of the countless partnerships that are now in the works. You see, on day one, we made a statement to strengthen our partnership as together our legislative colleagues and the governor's office provided almost $900 million of funding for our HBCUs to fund tuition. <laughs> to fund tuition support, capital support, operating costs, financial aid, to bring together a concerted effort for greater security. This is a partnership that is just beginning and I can't wait to see the amazing things that we all together 
will do. In these partnerships, we are seeing the sacred obligation that we have to one another that was described repeatedly by Dr. King to build, to strengthen, to serve. See, we recognize in Virginia that we had a real heartbreaking reality that our children were not learning to read. Our administration worked with amazing leaders across the Commonwealth and particularly leaders like Principal Dabney from MLK Junior Middle School. <laughs> about what we need in order to bridge this huge gap. And what we found is that children across Virginia, but particularly children from the black community, children with disabilities, children living in poverty, were already disproportionately performing below benchmarks and at a risk of a lifetime, a lifetime of being behind. We came together in this bipartisan way to pass historic, historic legislation that takes a comprehensive approach at the most simple concept. All Virginia's children should be able to read. The Virginia Literacy Act, which I had the privilege of signing, which was brought together by champions on a bipartisan basis, including Senator McClellan. Thank you for your partnership. I want to thank, thank you for all the work to actually focus on the early grades K through third so that our children will have the educational support, the professional capabilities, and something that I know in my life, coaches that help children read. It's my goal to extend that from third grade to fifth grade and beyond. We aim to open up the future for the next generation, a future that will open up the dreams of all our children, a dream that was birthed by a nation on ideals that we clearly did not live up to. A dream of a nation that unbelievably deprived liberty for the enslaved, treated them without dignity, rather than men and women made in the image of an almighty God. A dream in a nation that had learned how to fly in the air like birds, but had not yet learned the simple act of walking together on this earth as brothers and sisters. And in a nation that admits its mistakes, grows and evolves, we are committed to telling our unique story accurately and completely and honestly. Recognizing that there have been so many leaders that have changed the future of America and we start today with the greatest among them, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He charged us to leave our mark, to carry the mantle of responsibility for our time, to open the rich vaults of opportunity in our land and to carry forth the scales of justice for all people. As I have the great privilege of serving as your governor, I'm committed to doing just that committed to make sure that we work together to provide all Virginians with an opportunity for higher paying jobs, committed to provide all Virginians with a world-class education, access to the right help right now for the mental health and behavioral health challenges that we know are the greatest crisis we face right now, access to affordable and available housing in a Virginia where the generations not just this one, but the future ones can live out Dr. Martin Luther King's dream. I hope that spirit pervades and mo pervades the room, pervades the Commonwealth, and motivates us to take on the challenges ahead. 
but we must do them together. It's what Virginians deserve and expect. This is our moment. Let's rise and meet it. God bless you, and thank you again for letting me join you to celebrate the life and legacy of one of the most extraordinary men to ever walk this earth, Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. God bless you. Thank you, Governor, for your words and your time today. Now it's my pleasure to introduce our Attorney General, Jason Meares. Uh, it is a real honor to be here today, uh, Dr. Lucas. Thank you for the invitation. I can see why you were known as the quiet child, shy child when you were uh, growing up. Uh, we know that education was so important to, to Dr. King. After all, he taught a philosophy class at his alma mater of Morehouse College. Um, it's why I'm so proud of one of my earliest opinions as Attorney General was dealing with our HBCUs. It's always intimidating in your transition when you get a phone call saying that one of Virginia's greatest icons, Dr. I mean, uh, Governor uh, L. Douglas Wilder, wanted to come talk to me. Uh, and that's when you kind of stop and say, talk to me. And he came to me with an idea, a frustration that he had seen uh, of the, the uh, different disparity in funding when it comes to our HBCUs, our private versus our public. And I said, well, I agree with you, that's a problem. And he says, well, you can help be part of the solution. So I'm so proud that one of my earliest Attorney General's opinion uh, was to outline the legal framework, framework in place for funding for HBCUs, private and public. I know this is a passion as well for Governor Yunkin. I'm so grateful for our friends at the General Assembly that permitted the General Assembly to provide funding for Virginia's private HBCUs like Virginia Union, TAG programs, the Virginia College Building Authority loans. I'm so proud of that fact being one of my first, first stamps as your Attorney General. I don't come from a privileged background. My, my mother fled her homeland penniless and homeless, and I've always been grateful for the people that have given me different opportunities throughout my educational career. So I was honored to be able to work with my Chief of Staff, DJ Jordan, with a new idea of how do we increase diversity in our legal world. And one thing we talked about was there's too many students who don't realize that going into law is a real possibility for them. And so I was proud last February to go to Virginia State University uh, to announce the very first Oliver Hill externship program of law and public policy at the Office of the Attorney General. <laughs> the idea is one you start getting near your junior senior year before you start thinking what next is we want you to think about the law. And so I'm so proud of our program, our inaugural class. We have three of those students here if they could stand. They were part of our inaugural class. Uh, Raina, Kesui, and, and Kaya, thank you. Yeah. I know we all think the world is in desperate need of more lawyers, uh, but if you think about all the achievements we have uh, made as a country, so much of that of those brave souls, like one of my legal heroes, Oliver Hill, who worked so hard to create this new world that we're in now. We've talked often today about Dr. King's legacy, and I thought you often see it in the most unexpected places. I am a huge fan of the Olympic Games and the opening ceremony. I love to see what the home country throws and opens as the very best of their culture, and the parade of nations when we all walk in. And if you know, we start with Greece, and then it goes in alphabetical order. And I noticed something when I was watching the most recent summer games in Tokyo. 119 countries walked into that stadium. Only one, only one country, when they announced us, the United States of America, did our delegation look like the entire world. Every race, every color, every creed. We have often fallen far short of that promissory note that Dr. King 
advocated for in the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. But I think it's also important that we step back and we just marvel at this amazing America that has been the last best hope for so many and as we strive indeed every day towards that more perfect union. Thank you all. God bless you. Attorney General Meares, thank you for your remarks and joining us this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the VU Choir to sing Ain't Gonna Let Nobody, followed by Dr. Ricardo Brown with the special introduction of our morning speaker. Ain't gonna let nobody Good morning. Our speaker today, Dr. Howard John Wesley, a native of Chicago, Illinois, a fourth generation preacher, the son of the late Dr. Alvin and Dr. Helene Wesley. He received the Bachelor of Science degree in biomedical and electrical engineering from Duke University, his seminary degree from Boston University, School of Theology, Doctor of Ministry degree from Northern Baptist Seminary, and presently a student in the PhD program at the Christian Theological Seminary in Indianapolis, Indiana. He loves school, amen. <laughs> He's a board member of Virginia Union University, lifetime member of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, and father of two sons. Our speaker for the day, the senior pastor of the Alfred Street Baptist Church, Dr. Wesley. I love you, good morning. Grace and peace be unto you from God who loves us as father and mother, and Jesus Christ who always and alone is my resurrected, my risen, my reigning and my returning redeemer. To all those in the place who are worthy to be recognized and appropriately have been so on today, to all of our community servants and our honorees, our principals and all our administrators, to our elected officials both on the dais and uh, in this place, to the Honorable Governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia, Governor Youngkin, to President Lucas and all those who serve at Virginia Union University, to my brothers and sisters in this place who know the burden and the blessing of preaching God's holy word, and to you, my brothers in Christ and in creation, good morning. good morning. I am honored to be able to be afforded these few moments and minutes to share not only as we come to celebrate those who serve among us and live out the dream of Dr. King, but even more so to come in a call of memorial, to remember the life of one whose legacy in death is far greater than his short 39 years of life. One who died on the birthing table trying to realize a dream of a better, a fairer, and a more just America. We come today to remember the voice, the vision, 
the life and the legacy of not just Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., but the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The reason I want to highlight that clerical title that is so often left out is we must remember that Dr. King was a man of faith called by God and commissioned to be a prophet in the line of Jeremiah and Isaiah and Amos. Those who remember that the word of God is clear that there is a danger in ever forgetting the legacy of those who prayed, paved, and paid the way for you to sit in the privilege that too often we take for granted. Dr. Richardson, there is a danger in forgetting. The Bible teaches that as the children of Israel are enslaved by a Pharaoh who simply did it because he did not remember Joseph. That when our Christ institutes the Lord's Supper, he commands his followers, do this in, oh, y'all read the Bible, in, re, in remembrance of me, because there is a danger in forgetting. I'm glad I was raised by a father whose motto and mantra of ministry was simply, thank God for memory. Without memory, without memorials, without this 45th call to come to this space to remember the life of Dr. Martin Luther King, we can very easily fall prey to forget that his dream of a beloved community has yet to be realized. That the battle still wages on. That the race is still being won and we have not yet crossed that finish line. Without a call to remember, you can become delusioned by momentary progress. You can become intoxicated by small steps forward. You can become complacent with momentary victories that did not translate into systemic change. You can confuse a small victory with the entire battle. And we have experienced victories, but the battle is not yet won. The Voters' Right Act of 1964 was a victory, but it was not the whole battle. 1954, Brown versus Board of Education was a victory, but it was not the entire battle. The destruction of Jim Crow laws in 1964 with the passing of the 13th Amendment was a victory, but it was not the whole battle. The election and the re-election of the first black president, the seating of the first black female Supreme Court justice are all victories, but they are not the final battle. And your ability to own a home on Rivers Road or in Short Pump and to drive your Mercedes as you drop your children off at private school on your way to your downtown office and the ability to vacation on Martha's Vineyard is a victory. But it is not the entire battle. And it is possible, President Lucas, to be deluded by victory and lose sight of a larger battle. It is possible to experience small progress that makes you ignorant of major setbacks that you can celebrate one step forward and sleep while you take five steps back. <laughs> Forgive me, I'm a Baptist preacher, but that's the lesson I learned in the children of Israel on their journey to a place of promise. These folk who've been enslaved for 400 years have now experienced the victory of God coming out of Egypt. They have crossed the Red Sea. They've seen Pharaoh's eulogy and funeral. They've survived 40 years of wandering in wilderness areas. They've successfully dealt with the transition from one Moses to one named Joshua. They are on their way to a place of promise. 
The Bible tells us that in the book of Joshua, around chapter 6, they do the unprecedented. They conquer Jericho. You pass Sunday school, you know Joshua fit the battle of Jericho. You remember Jericho was a city set on top of a hill, giving it the military advantage of height over any who would try to attack the city? You remember Jericho had 12 to 18 foot walls that had never been penetrated. Jericho was a city that had never been conquered with an army that had never been defeated. And in Joshua chapter six, these, these fledgling group of former slaves and children of former slaves have now done the impossible. They have conquered Jericho. Not because their military might was so strong, but because they found out that if God is with you, walls will fall. If God is with you, laws can change. If God is with you, elected officials can be voted in and voted out. If God is with you, Systems can be changed and you can see what you never thought you would see and experience because God was with them. And they became excited about the victory at Jericho. The problem was that the battle was not over yet. And I know you may have given up reading in Joshua 6, but there's a 7 that comes after it. And in chapter 7, these people who have just conquered Jericho now come against a little town called Ai. You don't know much about Ai because ain't much to know about Ai. Ai wasn't Jericho. Ai did not have the military prowess of the army of Jericho. There are no walls in Ai. As a matter of fact, scholars would tell you the population of AI was somewhere around 1,500 people. And here come Joshua and the children of Israel with Jericho right behind them, ready to face AI. And the Bible teaches us in Joshua 7 that these people who have defeated Jericho lose to AI. And not only did they lose, but they lost so bad that the Bible says they were routed by the men of Ai. They were chased out of the city. And that their hearts melted in fear when they realized they could not conquer Ai. Now what I want to know is how can a people who've experienced the victory of Jericho, who've made it through the wilderness, who witnessed the eulogy of Pharaoh, who came through Red Sea, who'd been delivered out of bondage, how could y'all lose to AI? How can the people who have the freedom of slavery behind them and the assurance of God with them and the unprecedented elections and victories that they have witnessed, how in the world did we get here? That's what they were asking in chapter 7, and that's what some of us ought to be asking on this day in 2023. How in the world did we get here? How have we experienced this resurgence of supremacy and race within our nation? How have we come back to a place where men have control over women's bodies. How have we come to a place where those who protest the innocent killing of black and brown bodies are deemed rioters, but insurrectionists are called patriots? How have we come back to this place? How can we have come through the Voters' Rights Act and now reach a place where voters' rights are being restricted and restrained? How can we see 200 plus mass shootings a year in this great state of America and and yet not be able to change gun laws? How 
How can we reach this place where there are those who are greater advocates for life in the womb than they are for justice in our neighborhoods? How can we reach this place where we were 96,000 votes away from Herschel Walker being sent to the United States Senate in D.C. How in the... How did we get here? Maybe, maybe, maybe they lost and we got here because we allowed the arrogance of past victories to cause us to change our contemporary strategies. Maybe we got here because we underestimated AI and we didn't take as many people to the polls, I mean battlefields, yes, sir. as we were supposed to. Maybe they got there because we have leaders whose personal greed is greater than the public good. Maybe we got there because we've lost a sense of community that we've got, as Governor said, to stand together and do this together. Maybe we got here because we've expected other people to do for us what we were called to do for ourselves. Maybe we got here because we've ostracized members of our own community because of whom they choose to love and how they identify themselves sexually. Maybe we got here because we fight more for prosperity than we do equality. Maybe we have got here by the perverted evangelical Christianity that has sanitized social justice as if it is somehow detached from the life and the ministry of Jesus. I don't know. But here we are. The Bible says that after they lost to AI, Joshua and the elders of Israel got religious. They tore off their clothes and put on sackcloth and dusted themselves in ashes. And they began to pray. And they prayed. 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 And they prayed, <laughs> and they prayed. Yes, and in one of the most shocking places of scripture, God shows up to a people who were praying about how they got to where they are. And God tells Joshua and the elders of Israel in chapter seven and verse 10, God says, stop praying. Stop praying. Get back on your feet and go back into the battle. Paul, stop. You missed it. God says, stop praying. Paul, stop. You missed it. God says, I've heard your prayer. I'm tired of you praying. And now it's time for you to get off your praying knees. Get back on your fighting feet and get back into the battle that I've called you to fight. that there comes a moment when the prayer has to end yes, sir. and the real work has to begin. There comes a moment when there's gotta be more than your religion, there's gotta be your politic. There comes a moment when there's gotta be more than your Sunday shout, there's gotta be your Monday movement at some moment. God shows up and says, I heard your prayer, now go fight. It is, in the words of the great mystic theologian, Howard Thurman, Howard Thurman said this, and I close. He said, the power of prayer is directly connected to your willingness to be part of God's answer. Right. Try that again. The power of prayer is not rooted in your religious cliches. Power prayer is not rooted in your wearing sackcloth and ashes. Power prayer is not even rooted in how long your prayers are. Power prayer is directly connected to your willingness 
to be part of God's answer. Don't pray for nothing that you ain't going to be part of. And that's what God tells to Joshua and to us. Your prayer was to me, but the answer is in you. There comes a moment when the prayer must end. You all know that the end of every prayer is one word. Amen. Amen. You've been in church when someone was praying too long and you opened your eyes and wondered, <laughs> when is the amen coming? <laughs> and then I came all the way from Northern Virginia, 104 miles, to be in this place with one word. Let the church say amen. Say amen. Now, now you're quiet because you've been to Baptist churches and you know that when a Baptist preacher says, let the church say amen, that's a rhetorical colloquial device that is used to engage the call and response narrative and dynamic of African-American worship. <laughs> that, that when the preacher says, hey, let the church say amen, he's trying to get some help in the pulpit. When, when the preacher says, let the church say amen, that, that's a cue for you to shout and to wave. When the preacher says amen, you're supposed to lift up hands and say, go on, preacher, let the Holy Ghost use you. That... But I didn't come here to say, let the church say amen, looking for a shout. I didn't come here to get you to lift up your hands. I came to ask you to let the church say amen as an indication that it is now time to stop the prayer and to get back on our feet and to go do what God has empowered, called, and equipped us to do. Let the church say amen. Now go support your HBCUs. Let the church say amen. Now go mentor some young black girls and some young black boys. Let the church say amen. Now go register voters. Now let the church say amen. amen. Now go support our colleges. Let the church say, say amen. 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 Each year we recognize the life work of community leaders and game changers from our commonwealth. People who reflect the principles and the values that emulate what Dr. King taught and preached throughout his short life. Today, the 2023 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Leaders Award is presented to the principals of Richmond Public Schools. We salute their leadership in pre-K through 12th grade education. We salute their excellence in transitioning students from virtual education, because we know that wasn't easy, and back to the classroom. We thank them for their dedication to our schools, communities, and their love for our children. RPS is the best school division in the Commonwealth of Virginia. It is such a special place with such a rich history. We really try to honor Dr. King's vision of a beloved community that honors everyone for who they are, that draws on everyone's talents, and that truly is about equity and justice. Our motto at RPS is to teach with love, lead with love, and serve with love. Our principals are our key leaders who lead with love every day. Richmond Public Schools is absolutely wonderful because we create a family. Our students come to us and they bring the very best that they have. We try to make sure that every student has somebody in this building that they feel comfortable and safe having a conversation with or connecting with. I wanted my students to love the school that they're in and become alumni that were proud to say that they were uh, graduates of John Marshall High School. It is a goal here at John Marshall that we are connected to our community, strong. We say, come on in, roll up your sleeves and help us out. And they do that so often. I've had churches come in and, and redo and paint rooms and build rooms and support teachers and send gift baskets to students. And we've had businesses adopt sports programs. So we want the community here in our building. We welcome them in our buildings and we let them know uh, as often as possible that we appreciate what they do. 
We predominantly serve five housing projects. I am the spokesperson for those students because a lot of people see them less than because of where they live. Our students come with a host of challenges, but they are extremely lovable and they show their resiliency every single day by just showing up. As the principal, that's one of my main goals to let those kids know where you live does not define you. You can be and do anything you want to be, and we're here to support you. Many people have not stepped foot into MLK as it is now. There's huge changes, a lot of positivity. We have teachers that care. MLK is the best kept secret on the East End. We try to remove any barriers or obstacles so they not only go through the whole educational process, but they enjoy it and have a lifelong love of learning. We have several English as a second language students, and they come from a wide variety of backgrounds. We maintain a school culture and climate committee that ensures that we are celebrating every ethnicity that we have within our school. It's just meeting them where they are, and our teachers attempt to do that by digging in and doing the work every single day, by going through the data, finding out what's going on, what makes a certain child or family tick, and then working with that and making sure that we're able to move them forward in any way possible. Barack Obama Elementary School is a wonderful place to be. We just celebrated 100 years in existence. I've been the principal for over 18 years now, and I still have teachers there that started before I got there. So they like being there. The children are always involved and always doing their best. We're very meticulous about how we interact with our children because that's the foundation for what they're gonna experience for the, pretty much the rest of their lives. This is an important task that we have before us. It's not about the destination, it's about the journey. Recognizing educators this way is very important because it shows the importance of what we do on a daily basis. It's like validation that you're doing great work and someone sees that. We appreciate it and I am proud to be able to stand amongst all of my principals. To have all of them recognized at such an important, auspicious occasion is, is truly an honor. We're incredibly grateful. Um, I, I hope and pray that everybody here today uh, takes a minute to thank a principal, thank a teacher, thank a custodian or a bus driver for the work that they do. They are truly the backbone of our community and are doing the work of justice that Dr. King spoke of, advocated for, and spent his entire life fighting for and all of the folks at RPS, they are carrying his mantle forward, and I'm just so grateful to be there with him. Can I ask each elementary, middle school, and high school principal and principal directors with us this morning to stand at your prospective seats? Please stand. Please join me in congratulating all of the principals at Richmond Public Schools as the 2023 MLK Leaders in Education. Thank you, and you may be seated. Each principal will receive a gift from Virginia Union in recognition of a lifetime contribution to education. The principal honorees at the end of this program, if you go to the registration table out there, you will receive your gift, but come back to the ballroom so we can take a group picture. At this time, I would like to have Dr. Richardson, Dr. Lucas, Ms. Leopold, School Board Chair Rizzi Vice, Vice School Board Chair Burke, and past School Board Chair Dr. Harris Muhammad to please stand at the risers. And now can we have Superintendent Jason Cameras to join them? And this is a little surprise here. As you can see, this is a special honor. The plaque being presented to Superintendent Cameras reads, Virginia Union University Martin Luther King Jr. Lifetime Service Award 2023 is presented to Richmond Public Schools in recognition of a lifetime contribution to education, 45th Annual Community Leader Celebration honoring Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. January 13th, 2023, Virginia Union University Board of Trustees, Dr. Hakeem J. Lucas, University President. Congratulations. And if you can stay put right there, LaTanya Waller is principal of Thomas C. Bouchal Middle School, 
Richmond Public School Division of the Principal of the Year Award continually by going well above the day-to-day -day demands to create an exceptional educational environment for RPS students and the staff. She was named the 2011 Virginia Teacher of the Year for her work at Lucille Brown Middle School and eventually became an RPS principal. In 2021, she received the RAB Award for Distinguished Leadership. Principal Waller began her teaching career at Broad Rock Elementary School in 2001, a product of Richmond Public Schools. Ms. Waller holds several degrees in education leadership from Virginia Commonwealth University. Good principals have the respect of the people they serve. Good principals keep a sense of humor. Good principals are cool when stressed and calm under pressure. Good principals are visible throughout the school every single day. Please stand and welcome Division Principal of the Year, LaTanya Waller. Please come to the riser. <laughs> Ms. Waller, your plaque reads, Virginia Union University MLK Lifetime of Service Award 2022 presented to Ms. LaTanya Waller of Bouchon Middle School in recognition of a lifetime contribution to education. 45th Annual Community Leaders Celebration to honor Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. January 13th, 2023, Virginia Union University Board of Trustees, Dr. Hakeem J. Lucas, University President. Congratulations. Thank you. We're going to have Dr. Lyons to come back up and give the benediction, then Franklin Military Academy will retire to colors. Have a blessed day. Let us pray. The Lord bless you and keep you, keep you from giving up, and keep you from complacency. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you so that we may extend that grace to others. The Lord's countenance be upon you and give you peace. And may we be distributors of that peace this day. Amen. Thanks for watching the Martin Luther King Jr. Community Leaders Awards, sponsored by Virginia Union University, Living the Dream Incorporated, and Dominion Energy.